But, uh, yeah, if you can hear me, okay, uh, just say something. But um, I've cleaned up this carburetor, um, and we're going to kind of put it to get today together today. Um, and then uh, I'll answer any questions or anything you have on it or anything else while we're in the middle of it. But there's a couple of things that I didn't do in the rebuild video that I made, um, oh, I don't know, six months or so ago. It's still got some good good tips in it, but um, there's some things I should probably expand on. It's questions that I've been asked, so I'll ask those um, while we're here. But uh, that way everybody's got kind of a... You know, a little bit better understanding of these things they are not a complicated carburetor they are very very simple to put together very very easy to use um but uh you know for whatever reason they get a bad rap um and i i'm a hundred percent certain it's just because they just don't know how to adjust them and they're not complicated at all a holly is very very simple to to adjust um and so is an elbrock carburetor just depends on what your ability is to want to learn or your I guess background in using them so they're not overly complicated but uh you know we're uh they have their place you know it's like uh it's like anything else anybody that says that you know if they if you ask what's the best camshaft for a big block Chevy well they're all good they're all bad it all depends I mean there is no one size fits all in car stuff um so you know there is no you know this one's better than everything else nothing else is better um the edelbrock carburetor has a great place for it um street cars hot rods muscle cars um you know drag strip is kind of where they fall apart at you know sometimes in autocross and cornering they fall apart there too um and you know you need a little bit better design to control the fuel internally to keep the you know the jets and everything fed um so it doesn't uh you know starve anything um the hollies don't do exceptionally well there either you have to kind of set the floats a little bit differently to get that to work but you know everything's got its uh its place so um like I said, I guess if you're uh, if you're watching, you know, just let me know if the audio is okay and you can hear me. It's raining outside. I've got the garage door open and it's kind of coming in and out. So if it gets too much, just let me know in the live chat and I'll shut the garage door. But anyway, I just want to put this together today, show you a few more tips and tricks on how to properly set one of these up um, and just some little things to kind of remember when you're doing it. Um, and like I said, very, very, very easy. Not that complicated. Shouldn't take us... Oh, I don't know, more than half an hour or so to kind of put it all together. This carburetor's already been cleaned, um, already been put together, or already been, you know, disassembled as far as I disassemble them. Uh, everything's been cleaned. I, I typically will use just a can of carburetor cleaner. Um, carburetor cleaner and a soft toothbrush. Um, there's a reason why you should use a soft bristle brush instead of a metal brush. On the inside of the carburetor, you can kind of see that shiny surface. Doesn't matter what flavor carburetor it is, if it's an Edelbrock, a Holly, a Demon, whatever, they all have kind of a coating in there to protect that pop metal or soft aluminum metal that they use to uh, cast these things. That's a protective coating. It's It will protect it against the caustic natures of gasoline, but um, you know, when you have ethanol or anything like that, any little mark that you make in there that kind of deteriorates that coating that's kind of sprayed in there or cast into there, when you ruin that, um, you start to get into some deterioration of the metal. And when the metal, uh, when the metal uh, starts to break apart, then, um, you know, it just gets worse. It collects more garbage and, and starts to deteriorate and starts to build up calcium and all the other stuff. Uh, Andrew May, I appreciate that, man. Thanks for letting me know that the audio is good. And like I say, if the, uh, the rain outside gets a little too heavy, just let me know. But anyway, so you don't want to use a, a, um, a metal brush when you're cleaning these because the metal brush will tend to start to flake away that stuff. So an old toothbrush um, is the best thing to use if you have to get more aggressive than that. Um, sometimes just a little bit of elbow grease and a rag or whatever, but carb cleaner is pretty good. Um, usually one can I can do an entire carburetor with. If you've got something that's a little more nasty, a little more gross, it's just been through a lot more, then you can get those, um, uh, little buckets of carb cleaner where you, it's got a little basket in it. You can kind of submerge all this stuff in it. Uh, I think you can get them at AutoZone or Advance or whatever, but, 
forget the name of them, but um, but they work fairly well. But typically a carburetor cleaner and a good sized bucket to just throw it all in uh, is how I clean these. Like I say, everything's already been cleaned. I just wanted to do a final assembly on this and just show you a few tips and tricks on how we'll do it. So we'll just go ahead and get started on it. Um, as far as tools go, you know, you don't need a whole lot, but um, there are some basic ones, um, you know, just some screwdrivers, um, a, a, tor a couple of different sizes, Torx bits because of the different um, uh, screws that are in here. I believe there's three different ones, Torx bit sizes in there. So you'll need just a, a, a couple of those. I'll use a pair of pliers for the, uh, to get the baffles in and out and uh, some of the clips that go on, you know, the accelerator uh, pump and then if you've got the, the electric choke uh, and whatnot. So, you know, you'll need one of those to get the little C-clips and stuff on there. Um, longer screwdriver and then a uh, one with a very wide blade because we'll need that to get on to the accelerator pump. So, um, one thing that I do is I will typically save... I will typically save all the gaskets that came out of it. Um, and the reason being is not for any other reason that, you know, if you get into a situation where you buy a, a carburetor kit from an auto parts store, it should be sealed. Now that one's open because I created the kit. I had enough bits and pieces laying around that I could make a kit. Um, but, you know, just knowing what came out of it will help you, you know, determine if the kit that you bought has all the right stuff in it. Here's the good news. If these are the um, the ones for the uh, the jet or the um, uh, Venturi that go right here, if for some reason you're you know open up your carburetor kit and these two are missing, if you call Edelbrock and tell them hey um, by the instructions if you give them the number that these gaskets are missing, they will literally throw them in the mail to you no charge. I've done it a dozen times over the years where I've bought a kit. Um, and it's been missing one gasket or, or something in it or a, a, a spring or a check ball or whatever, they'll just drop it in the mail to you. Very, very nice of those folks to do that. They're just trying to make sure that you're taken care of. And, you know, I've always liked that about, uh, about Edelbrock. Their, their customer service is pretty top notch. So if you're ever missing any of these things, just give them a call. So anyway, I always keep these just to make sure. Um, but there again, it's just a good little best practice type of thing. But I've done enough of these that I kind of remember what they all are. And then uh, I always keep the, uh, you know, the main gasket, top body gasket. But anyway, you don't need to do that. I just do it just so I make sure I got the right stuff in there. Um, let's see. Really now, when, when, I, when I set these up or when I go to assemble them, it's best to assemble them the same way you came apart. So here's the front of the carburetor. I will set it on the bench like this. So the front's this way. When I disassemble it, I will disassemble it so everything goes off in the same order. So this is the right side of the carburetor, or driver's side of the carburetor. This is the passenger side. So all of the things that came off that side of the carburetor go on this side of the carburetor. And where that makes a lot of um, a difference is, if you look at the, um, this is a 1412, I believe. Yeah, this is a 1412 carburetor. Um, but these Venturi are all a little bit different. That tube right there has a spot that goes through the top of the top plate here. If you put these in wrong, like this came out of the right side of the carburetor, it will fit in the left side, no problem. It will bolt down. It'll fit into the left side, no problem. The problem is, is when you put the top plate on, if this is on incorrectly, you will not be able to seat it all the way. This one's in correctly. It will seat down all the way. No problem. Because it came out that little hole right there. Everything on these carburetors is that way, where they're a one-way type of deal, where if you jack this up, and put it in on the left side, it's down, sort of, and you try to put that on, got to be a little careful, you don't want to mess up that tube, but it will not go down past it because the body will not fit down in there, so you'll know right away if you jack this up, <clears throat> but anyway, that's a nice easy way to do it, keep the right side of the stuff on the right side, left side on the left side, same with the jets. Now these are the primary jets that go in the front. <clears throat> I know that because 
I, they took these out of the front side. The rear jets came out of the rear of the carburetor and they're towards the rear of my little deal here. Like I said, everything on here has been cleaned. It's all kind of laid out so it's easy for me to assemble and you know, you'll find a way that's best for you, but that's the way I do it just to try to keep things in in uh, in order. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting this thing together jets first. Um, not overly complicated on these things, but here's where you'll need a bigger little bit bigger screwdriver on these things. You just have to be a little careful. They don't need to be overly torqued down. They just need to be snug. They don't need to be, you know, elephant man strong in there. Just snug the thing down a little bit. That's all it takes. Again, it's pop metal. It doesn't really need a lot of uh, oomph behind it. Once they're in there, they're not going to back out of there. So just snug them down just a hair. All right. <clears throat> now that that's out of the way, we can start to do a couple of different things. I will typically put in the rear secondaries next. Again, these are one way only. So this came out of the right side of the carburetor. They drop right in. If you try to put it in on the left side, it does not, nothing lines up. So you can't screw this one up. But it goes in there on the right side. If you ever get stuck, too, the instructions are fairly good on this. And really what I use probably the most, or have used the most, is just this exploded view. And it'll tell you what kind of goes in when you're putting it all together. We're going to get into one little thing here, now that I just saw it and it reminded me of it, of the squirter here. I'm going to show you a little bit of different thing here, what comes in the kit versus what sometimes comes in some of the older carburetors. Um, so we'll go over that in just a minute. But anyway, that exploded view is good. So if you've got the instructions you, or you can print them off the Edelbrock website, it's really good. Just have a nice exploded view. Makes it a little bit easier. Um, but anyway, I usually put these in next. Gaskets. Let's dig those out of here. Okay. Now Edelbrock will put all the gaskets and all the clips uh, and everything, check ball weight, uh, in one little bag. So... We'll just uh, pop these open and grab them as we need them. So, again, you cannot, literally, you cannot screw this up because all the gaskets are different. Now, the bigger gaskets obviously are for um, the, uh, uh, the secondaries. You cannot fit them in the primary holes there. They have to go in there. And again, they only go in there one way. They've got a little notch on here that doesn't allow you to put these in wrong. They literally will not fit in there. So again, gaskets, easy. They only go on there one way. So anyway, we'll start throwing this thing together. One little thing too, if you do screw this up when it comes to the hardware, these, these screws are, are, there's two different ones. All of the long ones are internal to the carburetor. All of the short ones are the ones that bolt on the hat or the top plate to the top of the carburetor. Short on top, long ones go internal. So it's just an easy way to remember if you throw those in a bucket when you're uh, cleaning things up and don't know uh, where it's supposed to go. So let me find the right Torx bit here. Now I usually take these apart with a uh, um, with a uh, drill and uh, throw the bit in it because uh, it comes out really easy. But assembly, uh, I always put them together um, without that. There's just, there's no reason for, um, you know, to crank it down. Like I said, you're, you're trying to be a little gentle here. None of this stuff requires really, really, you know, any amount of inch pounds or, or definitely not foot pounds of torque. Just need to snug it up a little bit. That's all you're doing. And once it's seated, you'll know. Just snug. That's all you're looking for. We can go ahead and grab the other. Like I said, gasket only goes one way on there. And I usually just throw the gasket in there. That way you can't screw it up of where it goes. Remember, longer ones go on the inside. 
and this will go together pretty quickly. Like I said, they're not overly complicated. But if you don't know what you're doing, it's like anything else. It's, it's like re rebuilding a holly too, or a, you know, an engine or anything else. If you lay things out kind of in a in a nice, easy way, you know, you'll uh, you'll be able to figure out how they go together and how it goes back together pretty easily. And it's kind of hard to screw up. A lot of it is just a little bit of uh, you know doing it you know quite a bit over the, over the years. So anyway. Double checking these. All right, next we can do these the primaries. Now, like I said, the primaries are, are you know a little bit different because these will go in either side, but they will only seat when they're in here correctly, and this um, breather tube is referenced in the right spot, and we know it goes in the front. So, or excuse me, in the back. Now, these are the same way. These gaskets will only go in there one way. If you try to put that gasket in any other way, that little corner there matches up with that little corner in the carburetor. I don't know if you can see in there or not. Let me grab a light here. Let's Kind of see that little notch right there, that little corner, that gasket matches up to it. Hopefully you can see that. But anyway. So there's a gasket matching up to that corner. Push it in there and all good. Now again, I want to make sure that we reference these correctly. I just got them jacked up. That tube goes towards the back of the carburetor. This is the left side. And tube towards the back. This is the driver's side. Good. And that's the rest of our long screws. So I don't know if they planned on doing it that way, but it's just kind of nice to remember that long screws always go in there the same way so i guess too again you know um since this is a live stream and i didn't want to really edit anything out i hope everybody's been doing okay during uh tough times we're going through here um and i hope you're not bored to death at home like i am but um i am still working actually and uh we have not called off uh you know manufacturing or anything like that so you know everything's still kind of up and running until the government tells we can't i guess but anyway i hope you all are doing all right but anyway like i said uh if you are uh if you are watching this during the live stream you can certainly ask me any questions that you want about rebuilding these or anything else and i will be very happy to answer any of those questions so, all right, I think these are good. They're not. Again, you'll get used. You'll get kind of a feel for it when they're seated. You know, it doesn't like I said, doesn't need to be, you know, down too aggressive. So anyway, jets are in on the rear. The secondaries and primaries are in. I'm gonna throw the primary jets in. These are a little more difficult because of that little notch that's in there, but they're not complicated. You can just drop it in there and use a screwdriver to kind of flip it over if you need it. And eventually they'll kind of seat themselves in there. So, but But eventually they'll drop right in there. They got kind of a little, kind of hard to tell, but they've got kind of a little uh, flat spot in there before the threads start to kind of drop down in there. So they'll typically do that like this one did and then just snug it down and you're good to go. 
All right, that one's in. Let's see if we can get this one in without any drama. I guess the bigger your fingers are, the worse this is, but once you get it kind of flipped over and set in there, right? Just a matter of And it to cooperate and uh, eventually it'll start. Uh, yep, there we go. Again, there, it's pot metal, so you don't want to be too aggressive with it, just nice and easy, and, and then just uh, snug it down just a, just a touch. So we are good. So primary secondary jets primary secondary uh, venturi in uh, next thing we can do is drop in the um, uh, the baffles here for the floats now these are also directional um, the little um, perforated or the little uh, edge there uh, goes in on the top that's where it seats in there but if you put them in backwards and you put the um, uh, floats in um, it won't see down in there this little indention here is faces towards the front it goes towards the back of the carburetor and the reason is is you need operation of the float to uh to work in there actually the float goes like that so it doesn't if you do, do it wrong um it literally will not be able to seat down in there so you'll know if you'll get these in there wrong i do it all the time if i'm in a hurry or not paying attention but they literally just press down in there. And, uh, you don't need to be overly, just need to get it so it's kind of uh, level with the surface. Again, same way on the passenger side. And we'll just give it a little tap. All right. <clears throat> Now that's most of everything on the bottom side. We're going to monkey with a little bit here in just a minute, but that's typically where I'll, um, um, you know, kind of leave off there. One thing I want to talk about before we get into putting the floats on and everything up there is the squirter. Now, this will this will throw you off a little bit. In the kit that you buy, uh, grab the instructions here. In the kit that you buy, if you look over here, and that's the squirter, so it's number 35, it'll tell you that's the pump jet housing, that's the gasket, pump jet housing gasket. When you take this apart, sometimes they will come with this little weight and a little check ball. Sometimes it'll be with a spring and a check ball. Now this one, when I took it apart, had a spring in it. Some of these carburetors had a spring that the check ball used to keep the check ball down and then as the pressure was needed it would push back up based on the accelerator pump pushing down it will push down and then raise the check ball on the way to the spring to get the shot of fuel that you need the problem with that is like anything else springs wear out sometimes you can put them in wrong um, there's two different sizes on the spring there's a large end that goes towards the top that would sit on top of that and then the smaller end holds the little check ball in so I've seen people put that in wrong all the time <clears throat> excuse me but the kit will come with and where is my gasket kit the kit typically well I don't think I've seen one in quite a while it will come with here is the new check ball so there's the old check ball and spring Oop. the weight is the same um, thing as the spring however the weight is a, a weighted piece it doesn't uh, it doesn't change in value it doesn't lose its springiness so <clears throat> you know no big deal there what I have seen people do and I've done this a little bit. If you got too much of a dead spot and you're trying to, you know, open it up a little bit, you can do two things. You can shave down 
this weight so more fuel goes past it and so it's lighter now you got to be a little careful with this these aren't i don't know how many grams this thing weighs but it's fairly light um, and it will take you a little bit to kind of take the edges off whatever make it a little bit lighter but it does work the only problem with that though is these tubes here are all the exact same size and they aren't replaceable you can't get a bigger size tube for that so you can do one of two things if you've got a small um a little orifice drill you can drill that out and change the size of that hole so you can push more fuel through there but there again that's a very very precise type of type of deal can be done but you just have to be a little careful with it so check ball and spring we're going to leave out and never reuse those i just go with the new check ball and the weight so check ball goes in first to that hole there just drop it in there the weight it doesn't have any uh, up or down in it. it just goes right in on top just like that and that weight will keep the uh We'll keep the uh, check ball down and keep the fuel close so it doesn't dribble out of there. Now, this one is the uh, only one that uses these two little tiny screws. So, and then obviously there's only one gasket for these. And that goes in between there. So, anyway, just a little quick little down and dirty on that. Um, you know, if you're you're tuning and you feel like you got too much of a dead spot, you go through the tuning guide that I that I put out, um, and you can't get the uh, you can't get that uh, shot of fuel right. Um, you can certainly monkey around a little bit with that, and uh, try to see if you can get a little bit bigger shot of fuel. But there again, that's that's really where you're tuning with an AFR gauge, where you can kind of really look and see that you've got a lean spot going there. You know, you're up to that, you know, 14 and 15 to 1, you know, area on an AFR gauge, and you need to get it down into that, you know, 12 and a half, 13. A little bit of extra shot of fuel here sometimes helps. So, just a little tuning tip, but it's a pretty precise little deal. It's not really anything uh, anybody uh, has a deal on. I may do another video on just that, on how to adjust that, but I haven't gotten to that situation in quite a long time where I've needed to open that up um, or modify that, uh, the weight. You can use the spring, I guess, but uh, the weights just seems to be a better one. Um, but you can hear it rattling around in there. That's how you know a carburetor's got the weight in it versus the spring. These tend to rattle a little less because there's no check ball bouncing up and down there. Anyway, so we're pretty much done. You can throw in the uh, needle valve and seats if you want. These are not directional. One thing you need to take a look at is people tend to, I don't understand why, but they'll gorilla these things down and they just, just lightly needs to be seated. If they've been over tightened, you can sometimes feel a little edge in there. Most of the time the pop metal will take it all, but just make sure there's no little edge on there. If there is, um, you can get new ones, or sometimes if it's not overly aggressive, you can kind of sand it down. But that one's good, so we'll reuse that one. And then I don't adjust these, I just screw them in so they're down. And I think I checked these when I was cleaning it. And this one's got just a little edge on it, but nothing major, so... We'll call that one good. So anyway, it doesn't need to, like I said, doesn't need to be adjusted. Just you can just tighten them down and get them later. Let's see what the battery life looks like on here. Oh yeah, we're in good shape. All right. So accelerator pump. I think we are done there. Let's talk about the. Uh, Needle valve and seats. Now it's a wearable part. Um, this is the way it came out of there, and I saved it as an assembly so you can kind of see it. For whatever reason, people will leave this little screen off of here, and I didn't clean it. 
you can kind of tell there's been a little bit of garbage in there. It's just your last defense against getting garbage into the needle valve and seat. This is the needle valve that goes in there. It's just a weighted piece. And then the uh, float level rides on it. And as it raises and lowers, it lets fuel up into the float bowl. Um, I see people all the time that will just huck these little screens thinking they're going to restrict flow. You will not outflow that bowl. Trust me. You, you got to be flowing an awful lot of fuel or a lot of nitrous or something. And if you're doing that, this carburetor is probably not what you need. But there's no reason to leave take those off of there. Just leave them on there. Um, it'll help keep all the garbage and crap out of the carburetor. So <clears throat> just a little tip. Now these come in their own little sealed pack. And it comes with everything you need. So... <clears throat> We'll go ahead and put these bad boys together. And there again, the screen just pushes down in there. Sometimes you just got to twist it a little bit. And that's it. Gasket goes on. Sometimes you got to thread that gasket on there. That's okay. And then they just go into where they go. Now this is where you'll need a little bit wider blade. Let's get started in there. And they're at kind of an angle, so they don't really go straight up and down. I don't know if you can kind of see that. Or that... Uh, the tube is kind of cocked back. Um, you can kind of reference it off the uh, the stands that the, the float goes on. So you just be mindful of that if you can't get it started and you think you're going straight down with it. That's the reason why. But for some reason, I cannot find my smaller screwdriver. So I have a monster one here. That's the right. And again... These just need to get snugged down. They don't need to get overly tight. All right. There is our seat for the other one. I'm going to take these old ones that I used as a reference earlier. Set that aside because we don't need them anymore. All right. Get our... Uh, other needle and seat assembly out here. Yeah, it's it's one of the most common questions. I just had somebody the other day with uh, some carburetor questions, and you know, almost all of the things we can, all the problems that you have with carburetors, almost always deal with. Um, and if you keep them clean or keep the fuel filters clean or whatever you can usually take pretty good control over the operation of the carburetor. It's where you get garbage in here that you will throw them all off. Um, and that's not, uh, that again, that one doesn't matter what flavor it is. It, it will, Hollies are just as susceptible to, you know, garbage and junk like anything else. So. The more you can keep out of there, the better. All right. Let's snug that one down. And we're good to go. So, again, I don't know if you can see down in there. But that, <clears throat> this is where the fuel comes in. The passenger side fuel goes in there. You can kind of see. So I can see on the live stream here. You can kind of see that uh, little uh, screen sticking up in there. Again, this is just another last little defense to keep the garbage out of there. Don't, don't not use them. Definitely use them. So, all right. Let's talk about. Let's talk about how we put this top together. 
and I've done this a couple of times before. Um, I've done, I think I did it on the carburetor rebuild video. I don't think I talked about it in the tuning guide, but certainly did it on there. Um, when you put this together, um, setting the floats is pretty critical. Um, they'll tell you in the instructions or any YouTube video that's out there, I guess I've seen a couple of them, <clears throat> but I'm sure in the instructions here, yeah. It will tell you to use a 7 16th, sorry, this is in French. Um, it will tell you to use a 7 16th drill bit to set the level of the float. And that's probably okay. But with the more ethanol that's in the fuel, you want to keep less fuel in the float bowl. Now, how much less? Eh, you're kind of hit or miss there. Um, I've found something that helps out a little bit. Um, because when there's too much fuel in there, that's where you get into that situation where the ethanol boils over and you start getting into that, you know, garbage where, you know, you drive it for 10, 20 minutes, whatever engine gets up to operating temperature, you shut the thing off, um, and go in and grab a, a cheeseburger or a steak or whatever and come out, well, I guess, I guess probably a cheeseburger is better. <laughs> steak might take you a while to go through. But you go in and grab a cheeseburger or a Coke or whatever, you come back out, car's been sitting for five, ten minutes, you go to start it, and it won't start. It smells rich of fuel, it's flooded. The fuel is boiling. Ethanol boils at a little less than 180 degrees. What's the operating temperature of your engine? Most small block, big block, um, Gen 1, small block four, doesn't matter. They typically run way hotter than 180 degrees especially on a summer day. So you get hot fuel in there and fuel that comes um, or heat that comes from the intake manifold up into the carburetor. You just want to keep as least amount of fuel in there as possible. And I'll show you how I set that here in just a quick second. First, though, this gasket is universal, meaning it'll go on either way. Uh, it won't go on either way that way, but... You can always reference it by the holes. That's the hole for the accelerator pump. It's It just goes on there one way. You know what? Let's talk about that really quick first. In the kit, you will get a new rubber piece for the accelerator pump. And I usually just leave it on there to clean it. But pretty simple. But they tend to get a little softer. And that one is a lot softer. This one's a little more pliable but it's a little stronger it feels just more solid more stiff when they're old they will tend to get a little i guess the the ethanol or whatever in the fuel tends to weaken the the rubber a little bit so you can't really tell but i always just leave it on there uh when i clean it just to make sure just to remember it um and then when you buy a kit it'll have a new one in there but anyway Old one, new one. And uh, it is not overly complicated, but I'll usually just use a little screwdriver to pop it on there, and you're good to go. Now, the spring, they come with a new, oops. Oh, this one didn't have it. That's for the accelerator pump down into there. Uh, that spring there is a non-wearing piece, um, but everything else in here, this is plastic. The rod in there is metal, um, <clears throat> but that spring's a non-wearing piece, and it's just designed to kind of hold the whole assembly together. It's not, it's not overly, uh, you know, you're not going to rely too much on, on the spring part of it. It's just there to hold the thing together. This spring is the spring that you put down in there that rides into here that will give you how much tension or less tension you have on the on the accelerator pump as it operates. So anyway, gaskets on. <clears throat> we are going to put it on <clears throat> here because if you do not put it on here, you cannot put the um, the gasket on after the floats go on. So little tech tip there. Put the gasket on first. 
And like I said, it's universal and the easy way to figure it out is just the round ends go right there on the accelerator pump. Now let's talk about the floats because this is where you can really help yourself out. On the floats, these are brazed on here. So when you're cleaning it, um, I usually throw these in the carburetor cleaner, what I'm using, whatever, and then, uh, you know, let them soak a little bit, you know, on the seams and, um, you know, try to get them underwater a little bit. Sometimes I'll just give them a little bit of a squeeze, just very lightly, and then take them back out of the carburetor cleaner. Shake it. If you can hear any fluid in there, you got a bad float. You can replace it. These were both good, but... Let's talk about how these go in there because they will fit in there either way. But there's also this little limiting bend in there, little tang. So when you put the needle valve in there, that little tang will hit up against here. So it needs to go up. This is the upside, top side of the carburetor it needs to go there. And I'll show you real quick. I'll do that without the seat in there because I don't want it to fly out of there. If you put it in wrong, <clears throat> it will still go in there. But when you flip this over, this float's going to go dangling. All right? <clears throat> Not supposed to do that. So it just means you got it in there wrong. And you'll know it immediately. Again. I've done it a million times. You probably will too. But when you put it in there properly, and you got a little wiggle a little bit. When you put it in there properly, <clears throat> it will that little tang hits up against the body of it, and you know you got it in there correctly. Now you have to set the float. With the gasket on there because the gasket takes up some of the space between the body of the top here and the bottom of the float <clears throat> so you use this here just so you can see this is a 7 16th bit all right this is the size bit that they tell you to use yep 7 16th bit all you want to do is you can lay this down here all you're looking to do is just roll it underneath there. You don't have to set the float down here with it. You're just rolling it. Now that one is set a little high. Actually, it's set way high. So the easiest thing to do <clears throat> is I always usually put my thumb here and I will grab the body of the float and just give it a little tweak. Now that came up just a little bit more than I think I wanted it to. Yeah. That's about right. You just want that contact where it's about right at the, the apex, the thickness of the diameter of this, as you're rolling underneath there. So kind of where the, the float is right here, that's where you set it at. <clears throat> so that is <clears throat> actually pretty dialed on for 7 16 but as you see the more you roll over that float level drops the fuel in there which is fine on a street car doesn't matter you're not going to go through it what i do here's a 7 16 there's my gauge i will typically go one size up or two sizes up here in the Mid-South, um, you know, we've got pretty crappy gas like everybody does. But I will typically set it around that 15, 30 seconds or sometimes even that 34, 64, 31, 64 to get the fuel level down a little lower. Now, you can. That is a half inch bit. You can use a half inch and that's quite a variance between 7 sixteenths and half inch but very rare situations where I've needed to run it that low because I am here I know that I will almost always use the half inch bit and then if it's not enough fuel you'll know it because you'll start to see starvation issues at, 
extended wide open throttle where you're running fuel through there uh, at too much or an aggressive rate. So we're going to set this with the half inch bit. Again, if you want to play with it on these 2964s, 1532nds, or 3164s, you can. All of that is doing is adding more distance between the the top of the uh, or the bottom of the hat here and uh, the float. Sorry, I think I wrote a picture there. I was. Um, you're just trying to lower the float level. When you lower the float level, you lower the fuel level. So obviously you can't go too much further. You still need the, uh, the needle valve to uh, be able to operate and still be able to give you enough fuel. But um, yeah, you're just trying to limit it. So being here, I almost always set these up with half inch. So let's set this that way. Same thing, just gonna roll it under. Just barely where it gets halfway on the thickness of the that half inch and the leading edge of the, the float. Just want to see it to move up. So I'm going to hold down on it here. Give just a little tweak. May have been too much. Let's find out. No, actually it was just a little... And such a minute little adjustment, but it's going to make all the difference in the world. We're just trying to lower the fuel level just a little bit. All right, we're almost there. And again, you don't want to squeeze the, the body of that too much, just trying to Okay, here's a good situation. Way too much. So same thing. Just hold it here and then just give it a little downward push on it. And we're back. So actually, I'm going to call that good. So that one's set. All right. Let us... Assemble this other one needle valve Float tang Tang goes towards the top and All right And same thing here This was a little trickier because you got the accelerator pump in the way, but not that much yeah, that one needs to come way down. So again, you're just trying to push down on the, uh, <clears throat> the needle valve and it'll give you enough to bend a little bit on the, uh, the arm there. Let's see if that got her. Yeah, just a hair too much. Again, it's just a really fine adjustment but it's one that makes all the difference in the world all right we'll call that good like i said the ethanol and the fuel is what really dictates that so the 716s probably was you know work fine in the 80s and 90s where we didn't have any ethanol in the fuel but where we're at today you gotta have it um gotta run less fuel in there so anyway let's see here doesn't look like I have any questions, so I guess that's good. Either I'm giving a really good explanation or uh, everybody fell asleep, one of the two. All right. <clears throat> so, we're done pretty much there. Let me get that check ball and spring out of here because we're not using it anymore. All right. Now, it's easy to just kind of take a look and see what's left here. Those are the shorter screws. So these are for the top hat to secure the hat to the body. You've got the linkage arms. You've got this little arm that's for the throttle. We'll talk about that in just a minute. And then 
um, accelerator pump, and then these are the rods and jets. Those go, or the jets, those go in from the top when this is all secured. Let's talk about the most confusing thing on this carburetor for everybody. Now, I screwed up. I should have put this in first. So I'm going to have to take those out because I was so interested in talking about the secondaries, I forgot to put the doggone valve in. But again, you're going to do this. I did it. Uh, and now there's proof of that. So that's outstanding. But hey, nobody's perfect. If I was editing this, um, you would have never known. So, But anyway, one very confusing thing about Edelbrock carburetors is they are not mechanical. They are vacuum operated. Quite a bit on here is vacuum operated. But it's not a traditional vacuum secondaries like you have with a with a Holly carburetor where there's a big vacuum pot on the side and you can put different size springs in it to adjust how quickly or slowly the secondaries open. This one is controlled by this valve. And again, it only goes in one way. So you cannot, you cannot screw this up. It won't go in. It only falls in one way. And it only operates one way. If you try to put this in any other way, it will not go in. And it will frustrate you. It only goes one way. So when the vacuum drops... When you hammer open the throttle, and on the back side here, you can see. Are we not? There we go. When that vacuum drops, you will pull open. When the vacuum drops, it pulls open that blade and allows more air on the secondary side. <clears throat> when the vacuum in the engine drops, this will drop down as well, and you don't need as much fuel. So it's how that operates. I've heard people tons of times where they've got the carburetor together, and they're sitting in their driveway, and they're snapping, they've got it running, they're snapping the throttle open. I had a comment on the tuning video a couple weeks ago or a week ago, something like that, where the secondaries aren't opening. This thing's a piece of junk. I need to take it back. It, it is. It's just there's no load on the engine. And if there's no load, the secondaries aren't going to snap open, no matter how much you're snapping it open or how much RPM you're giving it in, the, in your driveway. It has to have the load of moving a big 3,500, 4,000, 6,000 pound car down the road. Once that vacuum drops in the manifold, it will pull that open and it'll give you all the fuel or excuse me, air that you need on the secondary side. So, just a little deal there. And again, these will only go in one way. I guess I probably should have noticed that I left that out of there, but again, if I was uh, if I was uh, I guess uh, doing this on a regular video, I would have edited all that out, and you'd have never known. So. Guess the rain stopped and the birds are out. So it's still a little cold here in Memphis these days. We had a couple of seventy-degree days and a lot of fifty-degree days. So we are in the. 50 degree weather right now which I don't like but summertime's right around the corner and we all can get back out on the road and that's the plan this year is to get the Chevelle done and out on the road and make a few tuning videos on how to actually tune a carburetor on the engine that one will be a big one but uh, obviously we'll do a might do a dyno video I don't know I've got enough dyno uh, guys around here I can go tune it but 
anyway so again it only goes in one way you'll know if it's in there wrong because none of this will work so anyway we're down and dirty so we know we've got everything in the carburetor the jets are in just kind of a quick visual now we're just going to finish off the top side spring for the accelerator pump now this one's the yellow spring um, the tuning kit calibration kit they call them um, will have different sizes in it they're not overly complicated it's just a matter of pulling the top of the carburetor off and you can put a spring in there um, it's got its own little pocket that fits into so this spring fits in there so when you put the top down on it'll all go down in there fairly easily this one's not overly complicated but i usually typically do this one way start at the back flip it over let the float settle down and then just set the carburetor down on there now here's where you'll figure out if you screwed up and you put anything in there incorrectly typically it's the primary the primary uh venturi but it just drops right down on there if you have to force this down you've done something wrong so now we're down in there we can take a couple of these shorter screws i usually do these four corners first and i'll show you why in just a minute but here's where a uh electrical uh drill is kind of nice because you can kind of zip them down but i'm afraid it'll ruin the audio and nobody will hear me which is probably not a bad thing but whatever so i will typically like i said just snug a couple of these these four right here in the middle down Must have had some garbage in there. But just again, it's pop metal. You don't need to crank these things down. You just want to snug it down just a little bit. what we're going to do next is make sure that the accelerator pump is functioning now you'll know if you've jacked up something in there because that literally that arm lever will not work so now this arm here is what the accelerator pump rod attaches to this side up top has a slot in it for a clip the bottom side does not have one so that is the easiest way and that will not come out of there there's no way for it to once we put the little clip in there we're good so let's get back to our little hardware bag here and the rest of the stuff that's in here um, those are the uh, little uh, clips that hold the accelerator um, this little piston um it holds the rod onto it um they're not overly complicated it's literally just a matter of compressing everything slide the rod in and out but um, these were already i had already changed them forgot about it um started to before i did this video and forgot about it so these will just go in my extra drawers these are the little clips for the um electric choke we do a video on that one of these days too a little cap a little block off plug and and these little clips oops wrong one. again you'll know if you've got the wrong whatever on here because the sizes are 
couple of different sizes in here but these little black clips are the ones that are used for All right, so just a quick check that the accelerator pump is working and it's fine. Now, let's talk about um, this little bracket here. If you have a cable operation operator or uh, if you're using a cable operated deal from um, uh, the back of the carburetor, whatever, uh, or choke anyway this plate excuse me that holds the choke cable um, if you're using a manual choke and it goes on there and the choke cable clamps in there and then operates in here so you can open or close the choke sticky stuff on there so I'm gonna put electric choke on this carburetor so you don't need to use this bracket. Set it aside, do whatever. But that's all it's for, is for the manual choke. And this is what this carburetor was. I'm going to convert it over to an electric choke. So, I'm going to leave that off there. So the rest of these short screws can go in. But, don't need to really talk about that. Let's talk about the, uh, the metering rod and the little piston. When you take these out of here, I never disassemble these all the way. This little cover here, which I know we've talked about. It's easiest just to slide. Again, these are also a tuning piece in the, the tuning kit or the calibration kit. I'm going to leave these in here because I don't know what it's going to be yet. But literally, the rod goes in this side 